Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to retouch our landscape. So we'll start with this photo that you may take uh, on your trip and you'll notice our skies is all blowing up white. We have it people on the places and it just average uh, image that just doesn't talk to us, doesn't bring anything. And when you was there, you have this atmosphere, you feel very nice, you have this a feeling about place but it does not necessarily always come true on the photo so what we're going to do it's a retouching and modified and creating this image so we'll adjust our horizon removing some unwanted elements restoring uh, some other elements and apply this coloring and theme and again you can see it is before and after so we will work and create something that is will be nice to remember about your travel trip or other elements. You can also take these techniques and apply in your other um, photography with people and other elements. So it's just overall my retouching process when I want to remember something about my trip. So let's go ahead and start work on this. In this video, we're going to look how to adjust and retouch some of your travel photos. And this is a photo from a Costwell, England. and. Uh, Maybe it means absolutely nothing to you. It does not strike maybe as a very nice compositing or whatever image, but to me, it's have some personal memories. And it's what nice about travel photos. They're not necessarily need mean to everyone something. It's better when they mean something to you. However, um, something here is not what I was saw with my eyes. Camera does not capture this. I also shot on low points, so horizon a little bit fall on the side and I want to retouch, remove maybe some of those elements, adjustment, add some colorization that I want to this. So and that's what I'm going to work with this. We'll open in camera bridge right now, just double time to open in camera raw. And inside the camera raw, first step, what I want to do, it's remove chromatic abbreviation and enable profile for my lens. It was shot on 17 millimeters, so all the way. And it's have a little bit distortion, but it's okay. We'll work on that. Okay, so when we're done with this, we'll go to our sharpness, and I will bring a little bit sharpness up to restore that as originally was applied on the other skin inside the camera. So we're kind of restoring this. Okay, next we'll go to our basic setup, and one thing what I want to do is take highlights and bring all the way down. Notice right now the sky is empty. But because we shot in camera raw, we have it more information inside the image. It's just not visible to us because the ranges was too wide. So I'm take highlights and bring all the way down. As I'm doing, you can see now we start having those sky pop up, the clouds. And shadows, we could bring some shadows out, but be careful because this will introduce digital noise. Usually I add just a little, little bit. Next, we're going to HSL adjustments. And with the luminous type, tab I want to bring sky a little bit more in and they will go in, in our blues and aqua so if I take a blue bring down you can see how they darken so I don't need to go too far but just bring a little bit those we can also work on a color of the brick example or a building and sometimes you can play around and see which one give you more interesting texture okay same on a greens actually if you look we bring up it's add kind of more highlights and that's what I'll do. Add a little bit more luminosity to the green. Okay, when I'm done with this, I want to open my image, but before open image, I want to be sure that is set to space. I'm using Adobe RGB. Most of you probably use it as sRGB or other ones, um, but this is my kind of color space I'm working with currently. And my depth of this is important set to 16 bit. In many cases, eight bit be default, However, I find in 16 bit you have it more information, so you don't have it fringing or kind of like those lines happening on a gradient. So when we're done, let's go ahead, click open image. This will open image inside the Photoshop. First things I want to fix some of this level. So if I'm going and drag, okay, where's my line? Oops, right here. If I drag my line and I look, you can see we leave it, our horizon is off on this level. So I want to adjust it. Doing this, I will select crop tool and important, I want to enable content where. Next, we'll go in a corner and start rotating. What I'm looking, it is horizontal line for my building this and maybe wall. 
the roof, because the kind of house was tilted away, uh, angled away from us, it will be tilted down, so that is a normal, but this line, I want to keep it horizontal about. So when I satisfy, I think it's good, all what we need to do, go ahead, press enter. Because we selected the content where Photoshop do its own calculation and very smart how it add elements that missing, like right here in the corners, bottoms, of course, some elements like where the people cannot totally figure out what to do, but it's okay because we're going to remove them from our scenery. And that's what we're going to do next. We'll go to our layer, drag and create a new layer. So I'll call this a retouching. We could also just create a simple adjustment layer well, or a layer and do all of this on the layer. But I know some retouching not necessarily will work on those elements. For example, if we select um, patch tool, it won't necessarily work on an empty, it needs some other ones. So in this case, because we're going to come uh, use all these different tools, I would prefer to do just on one uh, layer. Okay, so we're here, let's go right now, we'll select actually patch tool, as I said before, and we can go closer to our image, zoom in, like right here we have it some hand, somebody seems like taking cell phone photos with hand, we'll just select this, moving to area where you think look closer, and released. And there was adjustments on somewhere, that right here, let's move it, we have it another one, Let's go like right here, select it, move it, release it. And actually you can see Photoshop does a very good job on matching. And even work, well, we'll come back to this in a second, but let's say right here we have a gentleman and we're going to remove him. So I'm going just around, like right here. We're going to adjust, I want to be sure my kind of gate matching or fence a little bit matching, release it, press enter, and you can see right here, he's disappeared. We have it some magenta, some right um, discoloring, and I think this is more going like overlay, almost look to me discoloring. So we'll need to fix some of those elements. And the best way probably use it, the clone tool. With the tool, we can select it, and we can just kind of adjusting again right here. Be sure our clone tool may be set to 50% opacity. And I'm just going to select and fix it some of those elements. Right here, realigning. So we can fix actually all the where the gentleman was standing, but I think. We'll just touch up a little bit here. And I think this one is actually does not look that bad. So we'll just adjustments and we'll leave it like this element. Again, if you need it to fix um, where he was standing, remember we can always go select and maybe move a little bit there. So it's adjusting. Let's click this, move here kind of adjust a little bit this road. Again, remember it will be far away. And next we have it a little bit harder, but we have these two gentlemen and we have it also board and including plants. So that could be a little bit um, more challenge to work on this. But let's do it in steps. So first what I do, I'll select these guys right here. Okay, and let's move them maybe around there. So we have it, some adjustments. Next, we have this wall, which we're going to select. And we'll just move a little bit closer to the top wall. So we'll adjust. We still have this problem with coloring that we need to come back and address, but it will help at this point for us to adjust that. Okay, let's go right here. We'll select some other elements. This has given us very, very basic, but it's given us 
nice beginning to do that. Okay, let's go right there. Okay, adjustments. And we have the board. So with the board, let's do... Um, okay, I'm just releasing this. But we have a board right here. So what I want to do is go ahead, take this board, copy, paste. Okay, yeah, I have it right there. Okay. Okay, copy, paste. Okay, this is our board. We go to edit, transform. Flip horizontally. So we'll just put it around here, I think. Okay, we still have it just a little bit overlay, so we'll delete that one. Bring in. Um, some adjustments need be, of course, applied. And we have it plant cover so we can go take a brush tool let's disable we'll go to um, select color range we'll go select the green let's pop up green a little bit more oops okay right here can go back and add a mask okay this control I command I to inverse our mask so we'll just a little bit help us to work on um, our plant again we'll steal some elements you can see missing here so we'll go take normal brush soft edge okay let's make it smaller We'll set to black color, 0%, so we can actually kind of like go right there. I don't really worry too much about yet this area. I'm just right now want to... Okay, let's go set to 10%. Okay, 100% again. Just add a little bit more greenish to this restoring but we have it our board kind of build okay now we still have it the elements right here it's a burning so let's go ahead um, we'll create new layer we'll take our uh, tool the cloning tool stamp be sure it's set current and below and we can go ahead and start taking and kind of painting Let's zoom out right here and we can kind of paint in, in the elements like right there be careful because we don't need to go too much let's go set to 10 hundred percent opacity There we'll select more. Actually, yeah, there you go. So we'll add this way. And it's a slow progression, but you want to go a little bit slow so you can actually it's right there. There you go. Kind of like this. So we want to go a little bit slow so we have it right looking and again remember it will be far away so you don't need to too much worried about this but it does help with you if you set properly then we'll just go back right there maybe there you go some text okay now let's go to fix a little bit here 
will set to 50% opacity. We'll select the bricks. There you go. Bricks look good. Actually, you know what? Let's select just below on the edge. I like it. So we can adjust. And we'll just start painting slightly those bricks. You can add by double clicking, add more. The one notice things when I do this, I want to be sure my align is checked in because if you're not aligned, what's happening? I can select here, bring first, start clicking, and okay, it's work okay. I move it and it does not align properly. So if it's not, if it's unchecked, so like, sorry, right here, and you can see I, I do this, I go and it's same. So it you want to set align when we start working with this. Okay, let's fix a little bit below here. Same, I'm going to select the brick above and just slightly kind of coloring. Again, click again when we need it. If you need more texture, just double time click. It will bring a little bit more. We don't need this flower. We'll just bring this is actually very good texture to hide in some elements okay so let's go now back to this and we're going to use actually for this um spot healing tool so we'll try that one let's go back to our retouching level and what's happening with spot healing i can go over just like this and let photoshop figure out what need to do in many cases it does not bad job Sometimes you do need it clean up a little bit afterwards, but overall it should be okay. And I'll see right here, saturation coming up. Okay, so let's go now, um, zoom out. We have it also wires right here. And like I said before, if we set properly, and you just drag, you can see Photoshop actually does not bad at all very nicely very fast so we can do this way it will read information from above so we want to cover two of them sometimes you maybe want to go over a couple times okay let's go right here so we'll go like right there be careful when we're doing closer because what's happening you can see it does not replace it so we need it almost sometimes going twice it's depend on algorithm how it will read information that's why sometimes i like to use it uh, different i like to use healing brush because i can select area where i want them to read so i can go right, like right there so okay we'll come back to that one so let's go to fix around here But it definitely work a little bit better when we work with the bushes. Okay, so let's go ahead and select the healing brush tool for this. And the healing brush, I'll select sampling in the area. And now when I do, you can see it will apply sampling from the area I selected. The same if we need to restore the benches. Branch, I'll click on a branch around here. And just do like, you know, just restoring a little bit of those. So have them not floating in the air. Okay, let's select all of these layers, group together. We'll call it retouching. And here is the before and after. So you can see we remove it, restore some board, remove the people from our scenery with only missing couple things. And one, it is a reflection. So if we look closer, we still have the reflection of those people. We can leave them as a ghost, but if you want to fix it again, you can easy just going um, select our tool, spot healing brush, and we can just you know very fast fixing with a okay right there.
just remove it. We still have the board here, but so now we erase it. You know what? I also notice I don't like this antenna. I think it's antenna right here sitting. So let's go remove as well. Um, problem is when we're going close to the building, sometimes it will pick up building as well. So we want to be sure we are very careful. Use a smaller brush so it's have a smaller area to sample. There you go. And you can see it start picking up some elements, which is okay. Yeah, I don't like those antennas, so it's look way better now. Okay, right here we are actually done, I think, without retouching. I'm gonna maybe when I go around I will find something else pop up. But I think at this point we remove those people. Okay, we remove the reflections, some wiring, antennas. I think that is work. Good. So next let's go work on enhancing, bring, bringing even more clouds out and add dimension even deeper to this. And the best way I find out to do this, we'll hold Control Shift Alt E, Command Option Alt E, and it is, um, will create layer, new layer by merging all visible layers together and it will create. So it's what we needed. The next we'll go to image adjustment we'll go to black and white. And with black and white, because we're going to use it soft, a light blending mode in the future, it's meaning 50% gray will be invisible and wider will add a little bit more light and a darker will enhance darker. So it will have a contrast mode, that's what I call, but it is um, work this way. So in this case, if I make darker my skies, they will become darker. Okay. And if I want to highlight something, I can bring up and it will highlight those elements even better. Again, maybe bring some bricks we can do darker or we can bring them brighter. I think I'll bring them a little bit darker, the bricks and around there. So, okay, this is my black and white. Well, my goal when I do with black and white, it's give it this separation. So make a cloud stand up make a foliage stand up all these elements so they see separation in this next we'll go image adjustments and we're going to shadow and highlights and if you see like this only two of them be sure click show more options on so this case we have it full access it's what we wanted and we want to set radius on both of them for 10 and we'll take both amount to 100. okay now by using tone on the shadows I want to bring shadows a little bit darker and highlights we'll see how much maybe just play again i'm looking on separation i want my clouds stand up i want my uh, foliage come up so this is what we're doing and white you can see it's maybe too bright this one become too dark so we'll just maybe around 45. so let's go click ok and next step will help us bring even more texture and let's go filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. So on the same one, we'll apply unsharp mask. We can go very crazy, but I don't want to do this. We'll just go around maybe 80. Let's click OK. And now we'll switch the blend mode from normal to the soft light. So let's see what's happening. You can see it does apply, bring a little bit more HDR kind of more depth look for the shadow and highlights. It's also bring better on the texturing. Does not necessarily work all the time in some case, but you can try it and see if it will bring a little bit more in your. Always, if it's too strong, you can take opacity and just a little bit take opacity down like this. Okay, so it's look nice. Um, we could play a little bit more. I don't want to too much artistic. Again, this is memory for me. I want to add maybe. Um, some vignetting to this and let's work a little bit on the coloring. I always do my theme color. So if you have it your own style, you can add it. But in this case, I'm going just to add another curves. And this will be coloring. 
this is my secondary and sometimes I do just curves but right now I'm gonna go under and create selective color so we'll have a two coloring first I will disable my color with the curves and on the selecting selected colors we'll go select the black color layer and notice what's happening when I am adjust I can make crush or wash out I say before the nice things about this because we can soften those black lights without introducing digital noise so in this case I'll add just soften a little bit maybe about five and in some cases the without crush black that was introducing if you remember with global dodge and burn what we did it we still have a texture but we little bit soften them so give it this foggy misty look of England so it's what I like it and of course next with coloring if we want it we can add a little bit more let's move to blue move to a little bit green and we don't want we can go a little bit warmer or colder and in this case I think warmer maybe work a little bit better so kind of like this nice hazy look add let's go now to the neutrals and some this is our neutrals we can pop up a little bit them just again just slightly and we can play with colors so I'm going to instead cold I will bring neutrals to the warmer spectrum so it will have it this kind of colder warmer look uh, there maybe okay same we have it also white and mostly on a sky and notice what's happening I can take this and bring a little bit down to bring overall sky just a little bit lower in the coloring so it's about 30 it's bring more texture and in colors in there and the same we can modify you can have it kind of stormy green or colder look I think with the clouds I will go just slightly colder look a little bit more in cyan color like this in this case we'll have it our neutral is warm and we have it cold and cold on a hot and low spectrum so it is add some um, elements to this so let's go ahead we can also if you want to go very crazy you can also remember take a greens and modify greens make them colder or make a green a bit warmer in this case you know add yellowish kind of like color and in some case maybe you saw the people like to use these different colors create crazy green and red on with the people but I'll just make a little bit warmer on a foliage a little bit reddish okay let's go look on a blue this is our blue color and you can see hardly see but it's sky a little bit so we'll just pop up and we'll just add a little bit more colder look to our blue let's go look on cyan the yeah, same I'll bring cyan a little bit down and leave it there um, blue yellow so let's go ahead this is overall will be our yellow and yellow maybe bring up so it will add highlights leave it to our plan let's go bring right here same with coloring I'll go a little bit more to the words yellow and just a little bit warmer because I want green be a little bit warmer in this case okay so we can look before and after you can see how the toning apply it but it's also bring more in the skies and add all this um, additional effect on the water haziness kind of elements um, nice things if you like this style you can actually save it and have to copy and paste to your other work or drag to different layers so you save your style for your photo so you don't need to do all the time you can do just once for your trip photo because most likely they will be about in the same coloring range and you just can easily apply it and they have this their own theme so let's go now with color layer we enable we'll switch from normal to color blending mode um, because it's one apply luminosity just on the colors next we're going to our selection and select blue channel so we'll take blue just bring a little bit up click on the middle and drag down just a little bit again we don't need too much correction and we'll do with the reds we'll take bottom here and we'll go restore 
warm on a red just like this okay you can see just slightly curve it's not big change just add this is more um, what I call cinematic curves cinematic colors if you want to create kind of this you know what I'm called look somewhat film so you can apply it but again this is total option because this look nice as well but I will leave it for now just only make a pass just a little bit so color won't apply that much so the next we'll go create a new curve and this is, will be our vignetting for this I'm just take this handle top highlights and bring down so it's all dark next we're going to select marquee tool rectangle go almost to the corner you can see not all the way and let's drag and create this frame you can see how this is just a frame around and we'll go inside and we'll fill this frame with a black color so overall we just create a mask if we look on the mask itself you can see we have a white border and black inside okay so now we're going back to this mask we'll properties the mask and where it says feathering will just extend to maybe about 200 depend on your image but you see when you start having nice vignetting and let's switch from normal to the soft light soft light will add kind of nice between dark and not too overdone and I want to drag this vignetting and put under all colors so the color theme kind of will apply it again you can see before and after I think it's add a kind of nice focal point to the middle of our photo so I think at this point it's kind of image done so you can go ahead and save it printed you can always create additional Control shift alt e command option alt e new layer and we can create a kind of play with focus and this is total cre creativity or whatever because this is your travel photos um, but if you want to create something more interesting with a plank with focus so we'll create new and we'll go to filter blur gallery iris blur and this is give it us point so we can actually select point on the middle let's readjust drag those things out okay maybe you know kind of like this the reason why I'm doing just slightly blurring out because remember I used 17 millimeter lens and problem is right here have too much distortions sometimes real a lot distortions and I want to fix it them by adding this little blur to the end so kind of look more interesting but again this is up to you whatever you decide to do when you're done let's click enter and you can see it's not that much but just add a little bit blurring to the edges so whatever we have at higher distortions it's just a little bit hiding them and again this is totally optional things but I think it's add a little bit more to my focal point. The last step, go ahead, type, put it your name. And I'm usually put my name um, not on the middle, so I don't like, okay, let me, like right there, you know, sometimes you maybe want to go put on the middle so people does not steal your work. They still use it if they need it my goal for the name is so people recognize and if they like my work or want to do other things they know who to contact okay so we'll go select this and let's bring a little bit down because i don't want my name to be distraction for the image that i created okay there you go it's flew away there you go put it in Okay, so right here is our video, and thank you very much for watching. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Uh, like it, subscribe to the channel so you want to receive new updates on the videos, whatever is released. And your support on the Patreon for the Geek Play is greatly appreciated. Again, thank you for all your support.